Hello everybody, Yashika this side. Hopefully you're doing great. I hope you've created your very first GPT by now. Now it's time for us to take a big leap and use custom actions. So in this video, we will be learning how to connect our bot to a third party API to retrieve data. So let's get started. And yeah, one thing to mention that everything that I will be using during the course will be mentioned in the resource hub. So don't forget to download it. So now let's get started. Now let's talk about APIs. So what are APIs? API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's a way of connecting two or more computer programs, right? So here we will be connecting our GPT to our data set. We have two types of APIs. First are the free ones that are available for free, and second are the paid ones that are charged based on usage. For the purpose of this course, I will be utilizing a free API. All you need to do is create an account and we will get our API keys and we will be able to connect it with our bot. So I look for many APIs that are free and I finalize the one that gives us real time stock market data. As you see, the bot is also ready, but I will be creating it from scratch again. Let's go to its website. I've mentioned it in the resource hub and its name is financial modeling prep. This one right here. They provide a free API to the developers. You can go to developer drop down and select API doc. Now they have a ton of APIs here. And I thought that the full code one would be the best for us at the moment. So this is the one we will be using for the course. And for authentication, we have the stuff here. So yeah, we'll talk about it. Don't worry. For now, just do one thing, create an account and then go to your dashboard and here is the place where you will find your api keys mine is here don't try to copy it because i will be deleting it as soon as the course ends now talking about the full code api so it will give us most of the data about a particular stock okay so let's say we select apple so we will be getting these very fields here so i thought that we should use this one for the bot so I'm using this one, but you can use any one that you want or any other API as well. The main goal is to teach you how to connect it to the bot. Now talking about authentication, so it would be added to the path. It would be API key and then the API key that we have on the dashboard right here. So, okay, you can go and set up your account and then come back to the course. So let's go back to ChatGPT and create our very own custom GPT. Let's come to the configure tab, browse and then select actions and then create new actions. So as you can see, this is not like the usual API call that we make and it's a little different and we need to add schema here. So it's new for most of you, I guess, but we will be able to tackle it, don't worry. So just for your knowledge, we have schema here then here is authentication and here we can add the privacy policy for the GPT. This looks simple for now. Now it's time for us to learn how to connect both the programs. Okay, so this is a very useful GPT made by a YouTuber. It will enormously help us to create the GPT and use the custom actions and you know create the schema and everything. And I will add the link to it in the resource hub so that you can also access it. And I really appreciate him creating the GPT for us. So the first thing that we need to do is create the schema for our bot. So I'll say, I want you to create JSON schema for my custom action. Here is the endpoint in API call structure. Now we're going to come back here and we will select this part. We're not selecting this part because this is the response and we don't need it yet. So we will select this. We will come back here and paste it. Now just for differentiating, you can add these here, but not necessary, but I just like to add it. Now coming here, we need to tell it how to authorize it. So coming back, just paste it. 
if you want you can change your api key here but for now it's fine for me now it will create the json schema for us okay so our json schema is ready as you can see it's all made now you will be thinking what's the point of using this bot and not using the normal chat gpt so it is using our openai 3.1.0 that the normal chat gpt chats aren't i've tested both of them and this worked fine for me so i'm sticking to this one now another question would be why are we not writing it ourselves so the thing is that if we miss one bracket everything gets messed up so that's why we're using chat gpt or custom gpt to write it for us so let's copy it come back to our explore tab create new gpt configure and create new action now this is the place where we are going to paste it all right so this is not 100% correct right now. We need to add and modify a few things. So the first thing to keep in mind is if there are any comments that you can see here that start with double slash and then comment, like you can see on my screen, then please delete it because as you can see, it shows an error for it. So I'll delete it. Okay, so if the format is fine, then you will see this particular thing that pops up. If the format is not correct, then you will see an error right here. Okay, now let's talk about the things that we need to change. So the first thing would be that we need to take this API and this v3 one from here, and we need to paste it in the path because this acts as the main URL. And then this is the path that follows now if you take a look here it says that we need to have our api keys at the end of every request now end of every request means at the end of our url so we will again copy this up first let's copy this then we will add it here and i'll replace this and sign with a question mark because that's how parameters are called in a url now here just like symbol we will add two curly braces and we will write api key if you can see here is our api key parameter now since we don't want to add a custom header for api keys and we only want to pass it in the url so there are two ways to go about it. I've tested various ways and these two ways work the best for me. I'll show you. <clears throat> so you need to copy your API keys. Once again, no need to copy mine. I will be deleting them just after the course. So yeah, you'll take it. And here in the description of your API key, you're going to add it here. So API key for authorization is, and just add it. Now, next up, you need to come to authentication. Now here we have three types. None means no authentication. This is API key, and this is authorization. This is a different one. We don't need to touch it at the moment. Now amongst these also, if you can see, this is the basic one. This is weirder API key and this is custom header API key, but we don't want any of them. We want to add it as a parameter in the URL. So still we will add this one. So here you can write API key. You can add this here. So this is the first method. Now second method we have done already. We have added it here. So using both of them, it will be now able to understand that this is the api key for now openai has not given a direct way of adding it in the url here in the authentication one but if in the future there's an update i will update the course but for now these two parts are good for us now let's talk about the other things so as you can see this is our schema title version description this is the main url this is the path. So following the main URL, this is the path. Again, a description. Now this, this is the parameter. 
symbol means the symbol for the stock may be apple tesla etc so it will depend on what the user says and this is that now if you see that we have in path here but here we have in query so just remove this and put it path so that it gets added as the path now this is for retrieving the response nothing to change here so these were the small changes that had to be made by us this is a place where you can add the privacy policy if you want okay so now all is good for us we'll click on test i'll select always allow great so it worked in the first go because we had already made the changes that we needed to so you can note these changes down somewhere so that every time you're making one from here you can do those changes it's not necessary that every time you will have to add the api key here maybe it works with this one as a custom header but this for this particular one as you can see that we had to add it at the end of the url that's why we had followed these two parts and i very well know that it's not a good practice to add the api key here and but still for now till openai gives an update we will be following this method so yeah, it worked all fine now it's time for us to build the bot so let's go back to create okay now let's give the instructions you are an ai agent that now for that you will come to this you will select our now you can select this and you can paste it so you are an ai agent that gives and then paste it so this is the function of the bot now you have to refer to now here is going to be the name of our action so we are going to tell it that you have to refer to this particular action and get the response and from that only you need to give the response in the bot so if you can see we have it here we also have it in our actions i'll show it to you but for now you can see this one so from you have to refer to get stock code action and retrieve that data okay so you are an ai agent that does this 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 and you have to refer to this particular action and retrieve that data and use it during the conversation okay great so let's give it this till then i'll show you where else you can find the name so as you can see our action has been created you can create more actions here so as here we have so many api endpoints for crypto forex you could create many here but for now i'll go with this so if you scroll down yeah here is the name for the action so you can tell it that you can refer to this particular action for this particular work you need to instruct the bot in the gpt builder that's the main point i want to tell okay so that's done now what name so i'll say okay market insight is good but then stock market ai agent i'll name it okay now it's generating the profile picture again i'll mention that you need to specify the action name here as i did so don't forget to do that otherwise it won't be using it and might make decisions on its own so do mention it here okay so this is fine so i'll say okay good okay now it's time to answer the questions so it's saying that in providing stock market data should the agent prioritize brevity and precision or include brief explanations with the data so i'll say use the data retrieved from the action and include explanations with it 
Okay, great. This is also done. Now it's time for us to test. We can once come to the configure tab. If you want to change anything, so the description is informative stock data provider with explanations, fine. Then this is the instruction part. Okay, great. Conversation starters, fine. Yeah, for this one, we can just remove these two because they aren't needed here. Even this is not needed, but let's keep this one. Rest, everything is fine. If you want to add any knowledge base here, you can add it. If you want to add any instructions, you want to change it, you can do it here. For me, it looks all fine and great. So I'll click on save and only me. So if you're doing it for people with the link, then you need to have their policy URLs in the configure tab. But for now, it's for only me. So I'll click on confirm. And it's ready. So let's say that, okay, I'll say this one. Latest volume for Tesla and explain its significance. Now it is going to start the action. It's going to retrieve the data and then gives the data. So it's this and then some of the other informations I asked here explain its significance. So it's there. Okay. Now let's say, um, what is the high and low rate of the Apple stock for today? If you're not sure about which questions it can answer, you can come to this one and you can see this is the response. So you can ask anything. So it's day low, day high. You have market cap, you have average volume, open, previous close, everything. So that's not an issue. We have plenty of data here. We can ask plenty of questions with it. But as you can see, it reached this, low of this, then some of the explanation. Okay, great. Now I'll say one more question. Let's do what has been the change percentage for Tesla's stock. Okay, all great. So it's working and it's retrieving the data from the API that we have added as a custom action. I hope you've learned how to connect it with a third party API. Now you would be able to connect it with any API and you wouldn't face an issue. And just one more thing, if you're facing any errors in your JSON schema or anything, you can paste it here. You can tell it to troubleshoot the error and it will help you to troubleshoot it, right? So that's it. With this, we complete the three components of custom GPT that are prompts, knowledge base, as well as actions. There are endless possibilities of what we can achieve through actions. We can have a lot of integrations and APIs going on that will help to automate a lot of tasks. Hopefully you've got a lot of value from this one. Keep making new GPTs, browse for ideas, create the best ones. GPT Marketplace is going to be there soon. So this was it. See you later. Bye.